Welcome back, everyone. It is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here today with lesson number three of the Binance Basics tutorial, where today we're going to be going over how to place orders, what the difference between limit, market, and stop limit orders are, what all of these numbers mean, what post only and iceberg means. We're going to be going over all of that. So all of the order execution functions inside of Binance US we're going to be going over today. So if you don't already have a Binance US account and make sure you are in a country or state where you're allowed to use Binance US, obviously, if you're out of the US, you can use the global Binance version if it is allowed in your country. But if you don't have an account yet, you can go to our website, IdahoCryptoGroup.com and select sign up now right here where it says open a Binance account. And what that's going to do, it's going to take you to sign up using our referral code. And if you sign up using our referral code, after you complete $100 worth of trading within 30 days, you get a free $10 and so do we. So if you sign up using our referral code, it, it does help us out to be able to keep making these types of videos for you guys. So make sure to get your Binance US account set up. And if you haven't already watched the first three videos where we show you how to set your account up, how to send and receive cryptocurrency to Binance and also how to read these candlestick charts. Make sure to go watch those first. But today, like I said, we're going to be going over all of the order execution functions here within Binance. So here we are on Binance US under the advanced trading page. Make sure you go here and turn it to the trading view version. You don't want to have it on original trading view is much easier to navigate and much better at showing price action of the coin. Um, I've got it on the one day chart and I'm going to actually switch it over here to the Bitcoin versus US dollar tether um, chart, which is a uh, cryptocurrency stable coin. Tether stays at one dollar all the time. Like I said, in the second video of this series, we already went over all these candlesticks and time frames and trade pairs and what all of that means. So today we're going to be focusing on this right side of the screen, actually placing and executing orders. So the first thing that you're going to see here on your screen is this section right here. Now, what this is, this is the order book for Bitcoin versus US dollar tether on Binance US. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't show orders from Gemini or orders on other coins. This is strictly Bitcoin versus USDT on Binance.us. So this is the order book chart. This number right here in the middle is the current price of Bitcoin according to Binance US. Now, this number can be a little bit different from exchange to exchange, but at this current moment, Bitcoin is $16,865.39. And right above the current price, these red numbers, all these here, these are sell orders that other people have placed. So as you can see, as it goes up in price, there's people looking to sell Bitcoin. These green numbers down here below are buy orders that people have placed and they're waiting for their orders to get filled. And we'll hop into these different order types and how you can place your orders on here. Um, but again, these are your buys and these are your sells or your bids and your asks. On each one, you can see the price someone's looking to sell for, how much Bitcoin they're looking to sell, and what that equals in the US dollar tether amount. Now, keep in mind this big chunk here, these three and a half Bitcoin for sale, right around 16,888. That is not one order. That is a combination of a bunch of different. Now, it could be one order. One person could be looking to sell three and a half Bitcoin right there, um, but likely not the case. Usually, um, it's grouped into orders by decimal, as you can see right here. And you can change the grouping here by decimal. So if I only wanted to see it to the dollar, now you can see that it shows the price um, in groups increasing or decreasing by the dollar. If I go all the way up to the 100 mark here, you can see that it goes from 16,900 to 17,000, 17,100. So you can see these grouped orders here. Um, so let me take a screenshot here so it stops moving around so it's a little bit easier to explain and pull that up one second. Okay, so I went ahead and took a screenshot of that order book so it would stop moving around so much so we can talk a little bit more about these numbers. Um, but again, like I was saying, these are groups of orders of people that are looking to sell. So you can see that around the $17,500 mark on Binance US, there's around almost 21 Bitcoin up for sale at that price. If those were all to sell, that is worth about $365,000 US dollars. Um, same thing down here, you can see that there is, and this is what we would call buy or support walls or resistance. Um, this would be a buy wall, right, holding the price up because you can see at 16,800, there are almost 48 Bitcoin for sale or $806,000. So in order for the price of Bitcoin to go below $16,800, people would have to sell to these buyers. They'd have to get past all 48 of those Bitcoin in order for this price to go lower than 16,800. And then there's another buy wall there around the 16,700 mark. And again, I changed the grouping up here. So this is showing all the orders from 16,700 all the way up to 16,800. And that's where it groups them right here. Um, but again, in order for the price to get lower than 16,700, we would need to get rid of all these orders first. Now, they don't necessarily have to be filled. These people could see the price going down and cancel their orders and get out. Um, but that's a quick explanation 
explanation of the order book there and you can change it to where you can only see buys and you can scroll all the way down and you can see see even way down here people have set limit orders they're looking to buy around 11,200 and same thing you can switch it here to the sell order chart and I'm just right here on the top left um, and you can scroll all the way up and you can see people are looking to buy all the way back up here at 19,800 so on and so forth but anyways let me switch this back to the live order book chart and now down below here these are the orders that have actually gone through again the orders right here on the order book have not gone through yet they are pending orders people have placed orders to sell up here at 16,905 but they haven't gone through yet because no one's looking to buy there yet right so that's what they call the spread in the market would be the difference between the lowest sell order and the highest buy order that's what they call the spread in the market basically what price action is is buyers and sellers looking to find price equilibrium on an asset in this case it would be Bitcoin so sellers are selling buyers are buying and as more buy orders come in the price is gonna go up as more sell orders go through the price is gonna go down um, so that is the order book as well as the order history down here um, so now we're gonna be showing you guys how to actually place some orders so it can be a little bit overwhelming there are all sorts of different types of orders obviously you can either buy or sell so we have limit orders market orders stop limit orders and then uh, I think it stands for one one cancels other let me see uh, yeah one cancels the other so uh, those are the three main types of orders right here but before we place any of these orders we need to make sure that we have some funds to work with so in the last video I showed you guys how to send cryptocurrency to your Binance account so I sent over $300 worth of Ethereum um, but what I'm gonna do is convert this Ethereum into US dollar tether which again is a stable coin on Binance so that I can use that tether to show you guys how to make some trades um, on global Binance I believe you can trade against Ethereum pairs but on Binance US unfortunately you can only trade against Bitcoin coin and uh, stable coins so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and swap this ethereum into US dollar tether and I'm gonna show you how to do that using a market order so again you can go up here to the advanced trading page or if you just wanted to trade directly you can hit ethereum trade uh, and then choose the trade pair that you want again I want to be trading ethereum versus US dollar tether because I have ethereum but I'm trying to sell it for tether so I'm gonna go trade eth slash USDT click on that and that's going to take us to our advanced trading page and pull up the ethereum chart so um, again i sent over some ethereum in the last video and it's going to show me down here my available ethereum is about 0.23 almost a quarter of an ethereum so what i need to do is i need to sell this ethereum for usdt so the first and most simple type of order that i'm going to be going over is the market order now i'm going to be popping up the actual definition screenshot from the faq page of binance of the definitions of these types of orders so you guys can screenshot that um, so you can save it if you forget what the these orders do or how they work and also keep that in mind the Binance FAQ and resources page has lots of information about all sorts of different definitions and how to use different tools on their exchange um, the market order again I have my ethereum available right here and I want to sell all of it for US dollar tether so a market order is executed at the current market price as quickly as possible as soon as you place the order again you can use market orders for buy or sell so in this case I'm trying to sell my ethereum so again it's going to go at the market price it's going to immediately fill your order for whatever orders it can get obviously it's gonna to try to give you the best price possible when you're selling it's gonna sell for the highest price available but it's gonna happen immediately so again it's gonna sell at market price I can choose the amount of ethereum I want to sell here or I can swap it to the amount of US dollars worth I want to sell here but I'm just gonna go ahead and do amount of ethereum and you can use this little slider bar you can sell you know 20% 25% half I'm gonna go ahead and sell hundred percent of my ethereum at market price for US dollar tether and I'm gonna hit sell and again because it was a market order it immediately went through down here on the left you can go over to your order history and you can see that I did indeed sell ethereum for US dollar tether and it'll show you the average price that I sold at so that's the thing with market orders because it's filling immediately it could it could sell for a few different prices depending on how quickly the markets moving if it's moving up and down really fast you might be getting your orders in at like a few cents difference here and there um, but this was the average price I was filled for um, you can see how much I filled and the total US dollar tether I got so out of it I got 297 and 13 cents so if I go back to my wallet page so now you can see I swapped over all of my ethereum into US dollar tether now again this is a stable coin it's not gonna move up and down in value um, so there's no point holding it unless the market's crashing and you're trying to save yourself some losses but now I have 296 dollars worth of US dollar tether to trade with so market order works the same way when you're buying so let's say I wanted to buy some ADA coins and make sure you're trading against US dollar tether if that's what you're looking to do or again you can trade against Bitcoin and create Bitcoin profits but I'm gonna look up the ADA pair and here I have ADA versus US dollar tether 
if I wanted to do a market order, I can see that ADA is worth about 35 cents right now. So let's say I wanna spend, and again, you can change the unit of measurement right here. I can either choose to buy an amount of ADA or I can choose to buy an amount worth of US dollar tether. So let's say I wanted to buy $75 worth of ADA. Now, if I do that at market price and hit buy, boom, it's gonna go through. I can look at my order history and I can just see. So I did my $75 worth. And of course there was a little bit of a fee. And in the next video, we're gonna go over Binance's tiered fee trading system. Binance, in my opinion, has one of the best fee systems for day traders on the market. Um, as you can see, that's a super, super low fee to trade $75, but I basically got 212 mana coins with that market order. So super simple market orders, just immediately buy or sell at the nearest market price. As soon as you hit confirm, it immediately happens. So now let's talk about a limit order. A limit order is an order that you place on the order book with a specific price limit. So unlike a market order, it's not going to happen immediately unless you're setting your limit higher or lower than current market value, whether you're trying to buy or sell, but the limit order will only be executed once it hits your limit price. Let me try to find a slower moving coin here so we can actually see the order book. Um, I'm gonna go here to a super low volume coin just so I can show you guys. Um, the lowest volume coin currently right now on Binance is this rad coin. I don't even know what it is, um, but just for the purpose of having a slow moving order book, I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you guys limit orders on this rad coin. OK, so what we can see is that the current price of rad coin is one dollar and 70 cents. So I can see down here that I've got two hundred and twenty one dollars worth of US dollar tether available. So again, the market order happens immediately. Let me actually show you guys. You see how right here there is four hundred and forty dollars worth of rad for sale at this dollar. 63 mark watch if i buy five dollars worth we'll go five dollars you can see this number is going to change as soon as i hit buy oh uh minimum order of ten dollars whoops okay ten dollars so you can see there's 440 and 270 coins for sale at this price if i buy ten dollars worth boom immediately you can see that my order just took that ten dollars off the chart and it actually moved the price uh looks like someone else sold out so when i do market it happens immediately and you can immediately see it go out but again what a limit order is is you're saying this is the max or minimum i'm willing to buy or sell a coin for so if we're on the buy side of a limit order and i said okay you know what currently the price is at a dollar 63 let's say i wanted to buy let's say i wanted to buy at a dollar 55 and let's say I wanted to buy 25 rad coins, which would equal about 30, almost $39. Okay. Now, because this is a limit order and I'm telling, I'm telling the exchange that $1.55 is the most I'm willing to pay for rad coin. And obviously rad coin is worth more than that right now. And I place my buy order. It's going to go into the order book right here. And you can see this little orange dot means I have an order right here. And also down in the left, you can see open orders because again, it didn't fill immediately like a market order does because you actually set the limit for your order. So what I'm telling Binance is 155 is the max I'm willing to pay for a rad coin. And because no one is looking to sell that low at current moment, my order is just going to sit there on the order book until it sells through all these orders first. And then if the price goes that low, then it will fill my order um, if the price just kept going up and up and up that order is just going to sit there until it comes back down to a dollar 55 or i can hit cancel right here to cancel my order and binance does have this little time in force function down here where you have three options basically you have good till cancel immediate or cancel or fill or kill and basically i always leave it on gtc which means the order will continue to work until the order fills or is canceled so that's what this order is i have it on good till cancel basically this order is going to sit here until someone sells to me at a dollar 55 or I cancel the order. The second option is immediate or cancel, which means the order will execute all or part immediately and cancel any rest of the order that didn't fill. If I had $500 in here and I said my limit was $1.63 and 20 cents and I did immediate or cancel, it would fill the first $410, but then it would cancel the rest of it because I chose the immediate or cancel. And then the last option, fill or kill, the order must be filled immediately in its entirety or it'll be canceled. So in that case, if your whole entire order Order isn't filled as soon as you hit it it's going to immediately cancel that order um, but i usually just leave it on good till canceled it's just the easiest and makes the most sense um, there are benefits to using some of these which we'll go over in future videos um, but again here's my order sitting down here because i said that's the most i'm willing to pay it's not going to fill right now so i can go ahead and cancel that now i do have some rad that i bought so let's go over to a sell limit order again the current price is a dollar 63 and what if i said all right you know what i want to sell my rad but the least i'm willing to sell it for you know what i want out of of it is a dollar 70 and I want to sell I want to sell all of my rad for a dollar 70 okay 
which is about $10.20. And if I hit sell on this limit order, again, here my order pops up because market value is not that high yet. I said the least I'm willing to sell that rad for is $1.70, but the current price is at $1.63. So no one is selling to me yet. So you can see, you can literally see that is my order right there that is pending right here. I have six rad I'm trying to sell at $1.70, which is worth about $10. So again, I said my limit, my limit is $1.70. That's the least I'm willing to sell this coin for. So it's not going to sell until it gets that high, but I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this order. So one thing about limit orders is is if you set your limit higher or lower, it's always gonna give you the best price available right off the bat. So let's say I wanted to buy some more rad and let's say I was willing to pay up to $1.80 per rad coin and I wanna buy 20 of them, which would equal about $36. But obviously, uh, if I was willing to pay $1.80, but the price is only worth $1.63 right now, that wouldn't make sense for me to get charged $1.80 when current market value is $1.63. So if I do put in this limit order, the nice thing about limit orders is it will give you the best price available first. Um, so if I go ahead and hit buy, it gives you a little warning. Your order price is 5% higher, which is fine. doesn't really matter because... Binance saves you with these limit orders that it'll actually tell you the price you filled at. See, I set my limit at $1.80, but the average I actually filled at was $1.63. So it always gives you the best value available first. It's not gonna mark up your buys based on your limit. It's always gonna give you the best price available. So again, the differences between a market and limit order, the market order happens immediately at the market price. Limit orders, you get to set your price or better. Market orders fill immediately. Limit orders fill only at the limits order price or better. Market orders are manual and limit orders can also be set in advance, right? So so let's say you're doing some technical analysis and you expected the rad coin to go down to $1.40 for some reason. So you could go buy limit, $1.40 is the max I'm willing to pay. And if it drops that low, I think it's gonna bounce again. So I'm gonna buy 50 rad, which is $70 worth. And that's my limit is $1.40. So I can hit buy rad. It's gonna go into my open orders tab and you can actually see it here on the screen. It's my limit order where I'm looking to buy 50 rad. So again, it's not gonna fill because I said the most I'm willing to pay is $1.40. So once it gets down there, then that order will fill. Same thing on the upside, since I have some rad coin, let's say I expected it to make a nice bounce up here at $2.40, because that's where this kind of downward trend started right here is $1.40. So let's say at that point is where I wanted to sell. So I could go to sell. I could say, okay, at $2.40, I want to sell all my rad coin. Boom, I can put in my limit order in advance. And again, there we go. Once it gets back up to our limit price, then that order would fill. So you can set these orders in advance, which is nice. So I typically do use limit orders most of the time. I don't really ever use market orders. One dangerous thing about market orders is they are susceptible to market slippage, which basically means, let's say you put in a market order to buy a whole entire Bitcoin, but at that same time you were putting in your order to buy a Bitcoin, some whale sold millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin or something happened and Bitcoin's price crashed at the exact same time you were trying to make your market order, your market order might sell out way lower than you wanted to because of that market slippage. So it's always better to use limit orders because you can actually manually set your maximum or minimum price limit. Uh, you can also cancel your order right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that order. And then since I didn't do any research and have no idea what Radcoin is, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick market sell and sell off this Rad back for USDT. I just was using this one since the market is moving slow. Um, it was really easy to show you guys um, how your orders actually pop up on the order book chart. So let me sell my rad back for USDT. So that is limit and market orders. Now, two pieces of information here. They do have this post only option down here. And basically what this means is that your order is not going to be executed. It's only going to pop up onto the order book chart, which adds liquidity to the market. Um, and it eventually expire once you place another order. So this, this order won't really ever fill. There are some advanced tactics with institutional traders that are moving big money where they can put up walls to scare people and cancel their orders. So post only only puts your order onto the order book and it won't actually execute. Iceberg order is something interesting where you can break up large orders into smaller chunks and the other orders won't show up until those first ones are filled. I guess if you were like a big whale or institutional trader that was trying to make a huge purchase and you didn't want to scare people with like a giant candlestick, you can do your iceberg order, which will break it up into smaller orders. So it'll kind of look a little bit more natural. Again, I'm sure there's a few different reasons you could use that iceberg order. Uh, I've never really used it myself. Um, but yeah, basically that's what it does is it splits up giant orders into smaller chunks. Um, okay, so now we need to go over our stop limit orders. So let me pick a different coin here. Um, I know we wanted to buy some Tron. I'm not sure if Tron, yes, Tron is on Binance US. So TRX slash USDT. 
Um, what I'm going to go in here is going to show you guys how the stop limit orders work. A stop limit order is very similar to a limit order, except there is the stop element added to it. You have to put in your stop price, which is a stop price, or some call it a trigger price. And basically, that is a price that when market value hits that price, it's going to trigger a limit order for you. So stop limits are usually used to either, like I said, uh, eliminate loss or make sure you don't miss out on an upward move. So let me show you how a stop limit order could be used to eliminate loss. So let me just do a quick limit buy on Tron here again. Uh, I'm just going to refresh your memory on how these limit order works. One thing I typically do too is you want to set your limit price high a little bit higher than the market because again, it does always give you the best price. So it's not to a disadvantage to do that. Um, but the reason for that is let's say I wanted to buy, you can see that at 0 0.005549, there's $250 worth of Tron for sale. Let's say I wanted to buy $500 worth of Tron and I set my limit right there. It's only going to fill up half my order because there's not $500 worth for sale at that price. So if I set my limit a little bit higher, then it would buy up all the way up to that price. Let's say I wanted to buy like a million dollars worth of Tron um, and the most I was willing to pay was 0 0.056 up here. It would buy up all these orders until it hit that 0 0.056 and then it would stop filling that order because I hit my limit. Um, but anyways, let me just quickly do a limit order and I'm gonna buy, uh, we'll buy $100 worth of Tron right here real quick. Boom. Okay. So now I've got my Tron. So now let me show you how a stop limit works. So here I've got um, about 1800 Tron right here and it's sitting about five and a half cents. Now let's say you were going to go away for a while or you weren't going to watch the charts. Or you're going to sleep, whatever the case might be. And you wanted to say, okay, well, I just bought into Tron at about five and a half cents, right? Let's actually do the exact math here. Let me pull up the calculator handy dandy windows calculator 0 0.05546 now when i'm doing day trading i try to eliminate my losses around two to three percent you do not want to be losing trades bigger than i mean really even two to three percent is a huge loss that's what you want to be gaining like on a daily basis if you're doing day trading but um so let's say i didn't want to lose more than three percent overnight so i could times this by 0.97 right 97 percent to find negative three percent loss and that would put me at 0.53 about let's say 0 0.053 so what I could do is say, okay, if overnight Tron gets below 0 0.0538, which is my 3% loss overnight, I don't want to lose more than that. I need to set my trigger price. So if Tron hits this price overnight while I'm sleeping, then it is going to trigger a limit order. Now, one common mistake people do is putting their limit price at the same exact price as their trigger price. And the reason you don't want to do this is because again, once it hits that trigger price, that's where it sets your limit order. So let's say a big whale sold his huge bag of Tron overnight and it just blew past this price. Your limit order is not even going to have a chance to get filled because of how fast that price went down. So what you're going to want to do is give it a little bit of a buffer gap. So you're going to say, okay, once it hits this price, I want to sell my Tron for, and the least I'm willing to sell it for is, you know, 5.2 cents, 0 0.052. And again, it's not too in a disadvantage to do this with a limit order because Binance is always going to give you the best available deal on market. It's not going to sell them that low for you when there's other buyers looking to buy higher. If I set that stop limit, again, all this is saying is if Tron hits this price, I will then execute a limit order at this price for this amount of Tron. Oops, I had this on the buy tab. Uh, I want to be on the sell tab here, stop limit. So again, 0 0.0538 and then 0 0.0532. And again, all I'm saying is if it hits that price, I want to sell all my Tron. And this is a way that you can eliminate your loss. Again, as you can see, I'm going to lose some money. So what this does is it allows you to execute a trade for you automatically while you're not actively on the exchange. So what I'm saying, once again, if Tron hits my stop price overnight, it will then set a limit sell order at this price. And I'm looking to sell this amount of Tron, all of it. So again, that's a way you can eliminate your loss so you don't wake up in the morning and Tron's at two cents and you just lost half your portfolio. So I can hit sell, confirm, and then boom, it's gonna show my stop limit there. So again, I bought $100 worth of Tron and all I'm saying is if it hits this negative 3%, then I want to stop out. So once Tron hits my stop price, it's gonna set my limit and it's gonna sell me out. Now, stop limits can work exactly the same way. On the upside, if I wanted to say, okay, if I maybe I saw a breakout coming, all I'm saying is, okay, if Tron hits, what is this? Six point six and a half cents. I could say, okay, if overnight Tron hits 0 0.065, I wanna set a limit order and I'm willing to pay up to 0 0.066 cents, right? And I wanna buy all the Tron, $153 worth, hit buy. Oh, your balance is not enough. Yeah, I need to reset this little slider. If it ever does that, just slide your slider back down and do max again and confirm. 
boom, again, stop limit. So that's what a stop limit order does. It allows you to set up a future execution of an order at a particular price. So again, it can be used to take profits or it can be used as a safety net. That's why a lot of people call it a stop loss. It's stopping you from losing a bunch more money um, because it has a safety net for you. So let me cancel that one. Uh, let me show you one more way this can be used. So this setup I had right here would be if I wanted to buy immediately when it hit my stop price because my limit is higher. So it's gonna immediately fill my order. Let's say that I was thinking, okay, we have this line of uh, resistance here, but what I think Tron's gonna do based on my technical analysis is it's gonna come up to that price and then it's gonna come back down here and find this support on the bottom. So I don't think it's gonna break out immediately, which uh, usually doesn't. Usually there's like a first and second touch. And again, these are advanced trading topics. We're gonna go over support resistance and all that stuff, but just bear with me here for a second. All I'm saying is that I think overnight Tron is going to come up to that six and a half cents. And then once it hits that, I think it's gonna get rejected and then bounce back off of this price and then break through. So if I thought that's what was gonna happen, just theoretically, I could do set my stop, my trigger price at this six and a half cents, but then my limit price, I'm gonna set lower down here i'm going to say i think it's going to come up here and then i want to be in when it comes back down so what i could do is set my trigger price or my stop price at six and a half cents and then set my actual limit price back down here at 0 0.58 cents do that say i want to be all in buy confirm boom now basically what we have told binance to do for us is if the price hits six and a half cents. It will then put in a limit order to buy down here, which is not going to be filled immediately because the price is way higher. But once it comes back down, if I don't cancel the order before then, it will fill once I get here in hopes that I'm going to then get profit. So again, stop limits are a way to either eliminate losses or enter trades, um, and you can set them up in the future, which is super cool. Um, so let me cancel that. And the last type they have on here is an OCO. Um, one cancels other. So basically what this is, is it's a combination of a limit and a stop limit order. So um, I'm sitting on this Tron right now that I've bought. Let me remove these drawing tools here. I'm sitting on this Tron that I've bought. I've got 1800 Tron. So basically the way this works is right now we're sitting around this current price, right? And overnight at some point, it's either gonna go up or down, right? It might go sideways for a while, but eventually it's either gonna go up or down. So what I can do, I'm sitting on this Tron is I could say, okay, overnight, if it somehow just pops up and hits seven cents, I wanna sell out. Or if it goes below five cents or if it hits five cents, so let's say I wanna set a stop at five cents and then a limit, you know, I wanna cash out. I'm willing to sell it for 49.049 just so there's that buffer that I was talking about and I wanna sell all of it. So what that's gonna do, now I've got a one cancels other order set up. So basically I have two orders, as it says in the title, once one is executed, it cancels the other one. So I bought my Tron and I'm sitting on it right about this price. Now there's two things that could happen overnight. If it breaks up, I've got my limit sell set right here at seven cents to where boom, I would cash out and take my profit. Or overnight, if it dropped, you then have a stop loss to protect you right here. You've got one cancels other, but again, if one gets filled, the other one is gonna immediately cancel. You can't get the best of both worlds, but this is a super nice tool to where if you're sitting in a nice trade and you're not sure whether it's gonna go up or down and you need to walk away from the computer, or away from your exchange, whatever the case might be, you could still have a chance to take profits as well as minimize your losses with a stop loss. Super cool tool there that Binance has. Let me cancel those. So I think that is pretty much it. Um, Again, a quick overview. You have a market order, which will fill immediately at the nearest market available price. You have a limit order, which you set your maximum or minimum you're willing to buy or sell for, as well as the amount you'd like to sell. And then you have your stop limit order, which is a limit order, but it comes with a trigger price option at which point said limit order will be placed. Then you have your one cancels other, which is a combination of a limit and a stop limit order. Again, we also went over the order book as well as the order book history. All of your order history can also be seen down here. You can see each individual trade history down here. So you can see when I bought that rad, I actually had two different prices at which it was filled at. But this main order history page will show your average right here, the average you bought it at. So when you do market buys or limit buys, again, it's gonna take pieces of, of different different orders from different people. And you can see each individual one down here. Um, you can then see your funds here. So again, I've still got some USDT that I need to go put into some other coins because USDT is a stable coin, no point holding that. So I know that's a lot of information uh, where we go over all these different types of orders. So make sure to screenshot those Binance definitions I popped up so you can always go back and look at them if you ever get confused on which orders do what. But that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. We showed you how to read the order book, how to place limit market, stop limit orders, all that sort of thing. In the next video, we're gonna be going over 
over order fees, what the difference between a market maker and a taker is, as well as taking a look at Binance's tiered trading fee system. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below so we can answer them. If you learned anything from this video or enjoyed it, please leave a like on the video and make sure to subscribe so you can catch our future videos. Thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you next time.